Hi guys, so it's an interesting video on Wild Rift. So we're back with the patch review for patch 3.0. Now I'm right on top of this one. They just released this over an hour ago. And the patch itself will release in about roughly one hour's time. So I'm hoping that I can record this finish. Uh, you know, get it processed, get it posted. Uh, before the actual patch releases and as you guys know for my patch reviews I do record it in 720p instead of 4k reason for that is so that I, it takes faster time to process and I can upload it faster so that you guys can see the patch review faster so now straight up right from the get-go I'm gonna say that this is a pretty underwhelming patch now I think that um, saying it's patch 3.0 so going from a 2 point something series to a 3.0 normally in general most games that means that there is a either either there is some sort of huge uh, new added feature or change or if not in wild rift context it could be that oh they finally had a global release because if you guys didn't know it's still in beta but i think after reading the patch notes simply it's gone from two to three because it is a new year because as you guys know in league of legends pc um, they do every year is a season so after the season ends in a year the next season will start the next year and or roughly the next year and it'll go from like for example 10 to 10 point something to 11 point something and 11 point something to 12 point something so i think that even though wild rifts ranked seasons don't follow that they're just simply just trying to uh, follow the format basically so now enough about that let's just quickly get into the actual patch so first up we have a new champion set which is coming out on the 26th so set is a relatively new champion in in league pc like it's not like this year or last year or something it's a few years ago but generally in wild rift a lot of the champions we get are champions from like eight years ago kind of champion so this this one's probably like within the last three years so it is a relatively uh, new champion same goes for yumi and set is a very popular champion i think it'll be really uh fun to play he's gonna be a generally a baron laner but can't but on release in pc was also played as a support so we'll have to see in wild rift if he is actually played as a support but really fun champion in general i think a lot of people will be happy that he's coming out now guild v guild season 2 we're gonna cover this one quickly because i'm not too sure how many people are actually interested in guild v guild now, I actually do participate in it, but I don't really even know what the quests are. I don't even look at what the missions are. I just play with my friends in my guild, and that's pretty much it. So it goes from three group community missions to two, which I guess makes it uh, makes it easier because there are less missions that you have to complete in the group, whereas your solo mission goes up from one to two. So now, even if you don't play with your friends in your guild, you can contribute more because there are more solo uh, accessible missions, which... Uh, Obviously, it makes it easier to earn points. And furthermore, the trophy track from level 1 to 25 is lowered by 25%, so it shouldn't be easier to get rewards. Because I do know a lot of my guild members didn't manage to actually finish the rewards, and I managed to get the level 25 reward a few days before the guild v guild season ended. So, uh, it is really not that easy to get the guild v guild reward, so this is pretty good. Other than that, the theme is just changing from Piltover and Zahn, changing from that to Ionia. So... Don't think that it matters too much. I mean, of course, if you care about the storyline, maybe it does, but if not, it doesn't really matter too much. New Lunar New Year map where there'll be fireworks on spawn and probably some changes to like likely the towers, the nexus, and maybe some parts of the jungle, like just to fit the, the theme. If not, it might just be the fireworks. I'm not too sure about that. So voice chat is coming back, and if you guys read the article, which I have, Basically, it's going to release in the Americas first, and if it's successful there, it will branch out to the rest of the regions. So the real problem they had with the voice chat was basically after they solved the main issue. Uh, in patch 2.6, they could actually release it, but there was a glitch where in the screen, uh, in the loading, or in the lobby, I guess you could say, the... The voice chat was off, but it showed that it was on, so it was just a visual glitch, but they didn't want people to feel unsafe that they're being recorded or, you know, they're being heard by people when they actually weren't, so they chose to roll it out later, which is now in patch 3.0. So gifting changes, uh, you can only give two gifts per day instead of five, and friend requirement is now two weeks instead of 72 hours. Now, I don't think this matters too much if you're giving gifts to your friends. Now, unless you're someone who just gives a lot of gifts, uh, and not this is probably not really going to matter for the vast majority, like 99% of the player base. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. 
Now, new Wild Pass coming out in an hour's time, which will be Hextech Galio. Looks pretty cool from where I'm standing, and it will be the last Hextech skin in the Wild Pass, uh, where they will be changing the theme as they gone through in the 2022 video. So, new new modes, not really new, but Earth is coming back. Personally, I'm not too excited about Earth, and after like probably my first game, I was never really excited about Earth. Same goes for actually my other friends who play Wild Rift, but I knew that some people love Earth, and this will be good for those uh, group of people. Now, skins, a lot of new Lunar New Year or Chinese kind of related skins. Uh, five Firecracker skins on 26 January, Firecracker Jinx in an hour's time. Of course, we got Galio coming out as we covered. Two Warren Kingdom skins and a Radiant Wukong. So, yeah. Accessories, we have a ton of accessories. So, uh, a lot of bobbles, icons, banners, banners, and these, uh, I don't know what this, I forgot what this, these are called, but yeah, borders, and the profile display thing, emotes, um, borders uh, for the loading screen, and recall effects, also spawn tags. So, yeah. Alright, so, events, name that champion is coming back on the 20th of January, so that's roughly in 24 hours time from when this video it will hopefully will be released. So last time on this, this guy was Garen, and a lot of people managed to di did manage to guess this was Garen, including myself. Garen was my main guest, my first guest out of the five you get, but there's probably, they're gonna give another shadow and we're gonna guess another champion, I believe. Um, really underwhelming kind of event, especially when... Um, you're launching a patch 3.0 and the next main I think a bigger event or possibly a big event is on January 26th when Seth releases he releases with the Lunar Banquet event so more details probably will be coming out closer to the date now we can move on to the champion changes so first up Mundo his health base health regen going down from 12 to 9 and his health regen per level going down from 0.81 to 0.68. Now it first looks like the, the, these nerfs may be a bit significant to his health regen but if you really think about it, in my opinion the majority of his health regen comes from his ultimate anyway. So this doesn't actually affect his ultimate so this just affects him in the lane in general. Uh, will it affect him? Probably there will be some noticeable change but I don't think it's going to hurt him too badly. So I think Mundo is still going to be in an alright spot. And all, I already think Mundo is in an alright spot. I don't think he's too strong or too weak. Of course, if he gets fed, uh, like getting some kills in the laning phase, which does happen from time to time, he does become like pretty much unkillable. But he can be countered easily by Grievous Wounds. And he, I don't think he's the biggest problem in the world. I think he's in a good spot. Not too weak, not too strong. Now, gonna be honest here, when I saw Ezreal, I thought he was getting a nerf. But turns out they're actually buffing the AD ratio on his uh, Mystic Shot, which is his Q, which in the late game you launch roughly every 2 seconds or so. So this will increase his damage output in the mid to late game by a lot. Of course in the early game, not going to help him too much because he doesn't have too much AD uh, or cooldown in the first place. But his mid to late game is going to be way stronger. And I honestly don't think he needed this buff. And I think that giving him this buff is going to lead to a string of nerfs in the later patches. I do think this buff will make Ezreal very, very strong. And probably top tier, but we'll of course be doing a tier list uh, really soon. And we'll see where he stacks up on that, but I think he's going to be S plus tier. So Jax, getting a couple of um, nerfs, mainly targeted uh, around buffs, uh, buffs and nerfs, I guess you could say, some adjustments. So here he's getting a base health uh, regeneration increase from 9 to 12, and a base uh, health, uh, not he base health, health regeneration growth. From 0.55 to 0.81, so roughly the opposite of what Mundo got. So this is gonna help Jack's jungle a lot more than Jack's lane because sustain always helps jungle a lot more. So Jack's jungle will have a healthier clear. Uh, in lane, of course, it does help him a little bit as well in terms of restoring health, but it matters a lot more for jungle. Although they did say it's kind of targeted for lane. Same goes for like Riven later, which we'll cover in a bit. But here we have his passive. So attack speed per stack. Changing from point, uh, 2.4 plus 0 0.6 times level to it, this kind of rate. So now I've done the math on this one. At, at level 1, it's the same. It's still 3. As you can see, if you substitute level with 1, 1 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.6. 0 0.6 plus 2.4 is 3. So no changes at level 1. And at level 5, 9, and 13, there is a change of 0 0.1 
decrease in attack speed, 0.2 decrease in attack speed, and 0.3 decrease in attack speed. Now, obviously, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.3 seems to barely matter, but take into account that he has, I believe, 10 stacks. So at level 13, he will be nerfed by 0.3 per stack. So 0.3 per stack with 10 stacks, that's 3% attack speed. Now, 3% attack speed doesn't really matter. Honestly, not really. So overall, I think that this um, so-called nerf basically can be ignored. I don't really think it matters at all because what what difference is 3% attack speed going to make at level 13? And at lower levels, that's even less. So at like level 5, that's like a 1% attack speed nerf, which is barely going to be noticeable at all. So don't really think this matters at all. Now, Kale getting nerfed, honestly, as expected. She's still more or less getting permabanned at um, nearly every elo. So, she's getting a base health nerf of 10, and on kill that's huge because her early levels before level 5 are already so weak, and nerfing her base health is going to hurt her a lot more, but of course her early game is not the problem, her late game is the problem, so they actually have nerfed her late game. On her passive, her wave damage, of course when you get to level 10 up and upwards, you will get waves on your auto attack. It is the base um, damage on the wave damage is going down by 6 at all. Uh, levels and the AP ratio going down by 5% and the E is also getting a nerf its passive damage is going down by roughly 3 scaling to 6 same as this one also 3 scaling to 6 and AP ratio going down from 20% to 15% as well so overall AP kill getting a, a I wouldn't say huge but a relatively I would say it's not huge but I would say it's a significant nerf in terms of her damage in the late game now of course this does not affect a d kill which is also a or crit kill which is also a viable build which i've gone through in my kill uh, complete guide but i think that this change will impact kill and you will feel the nerf on kill and my personal prediction for kill is it's going to become like vagar or brand where people keep on permabanning them at the start when they were op they get nerfed and they're not op anymore but people still keep on promo banning uh, Brad and Kill, and it takes like a, mo a month or two months or so to pe for people to start realizing at last that they're not actually as OP as people thought they were. So it does take time for community sentiment to change, but I do think that this um, ner series of Nurse does make Kill a little bit more balanced. I don't really think she's that overpowered anymore. Of course, if she does get to level 15 and like 4 items, let's say she is still going to be very, very strong, maybe the best champion in the game. But Kill is meant to be like that. She's meant to be balanced with a strong late game and a weak, very, very weak early game. So probably the weakest early game in, in all of Wild Rift with the strongest late game. It is balanced to be that way. So Kill's late game will always be strong. But I do believe we'll get to a point where people realize that they can actually deal with Kill in the early game and she's not actually that strong. Because a lot of games end before Kill can reach that point in time, whether be it her team winning or her team losing. And yeah, I just... And, and people can deal with her in the early game like a Master Yi. So Master Yi is not getting permabanned in high elo, maybe in low elo. But I do think that Kill eventually will reach to that kind of point. And I do think that maybe in a month or two, people will stop banning Kill so much anymore. Misfortune getting a nerf. So they did give her a buff to her strut and her ult um, in the previous patch. And now this time they more or less are reverting the the uh, buff they gave her to her strut um, in terms of the bonus movement speed. Overall, of course, that this does not affect her damage, so she's still in the alright spot. Of course, we're going to do a tier list and we're going to put her, I think, pretty high up. So, um, movement speed, of course, was nice for faster rotations, which is why we didn't really need to build the Yomus. Now, I don't still don't think we need to build the Yomus, but of course, uh, having a little bit less movement speed means a little bit slower rotations, but overall, I don't think this will affect MF too much. Now Morgana fixing a bug in the dark binding where it was not where the, the um, duration you are CC for did not get affected by tenacity. It definitely felt that a couple of times when I built uh, when I had 110 and built Merc Treads and I got hit by the dark binding, I was wondering why I got rooted for so long, but I didn't notice that there was a bug. So clearly there was and they're fixing it, so that's good. And for her W tormented soil, damage to monsters going up from one one hundred and fifty to two hundred. And now Morgana jungle I already thought was good and now this is going to make her very very viable in the jungle as another AP option which there really isn't a whole lot of at the moment so I really like 
this change, this buff to Morgana Jungle. And I actually do have like a Morgana Jungle gameplay somewhere on the channel. I, it wasn't specifically titled as a Morgana gameplay, but it was one of the videos that I talked over the Morgana Jungle gameplay as I was talking about another topic. So that does exist. And next we move on to Riven, which is getting sort of like the Dex treatment where she's getting a base health regen going from 7.5 to 9. And her health regeneration per level going from 0.55 to 0.68. Pretty small for that one. But uh, it's going to help Riven jungle a uh, not a lot, but it's going to help Riven jungle more than it's going to help Riven lane, even though they are saying that it is going to help her in lane. I mean, it, it is going to help her in lane, but it's not going to help her in lane as much as the jungle. So I think it's a little bit more targeted at Riven in the jungle. Now, I really don't think Riven needs a buff in any way, shape, or form, because I honestly still believe that Riven is actually very strong and is top tier in the Baron, and, Baron lane and the jungle. Just that after she got in the nerfs, there it was a community sentiment that she wasn't as strong as she used to be. Of course, when you got nerfed, you're not going to be as strong as you used to be. But even if you got like a one health nerf, you still aren't going to be as strong as you used to be. But does it really matter? No. And I think that the, the nerfs that uh, Riven got through her Q and her E really didn't matter at all. But after she got those nerfs, people all just stopped playing Riven. So like I guess Riot thinks that she needs a buff, but... Honestly, I don't think that she's, I don't think she's in need of a, a buff. I just think that she is a little bit unpopular, or a little bit less popular than, or a lot less popular than what she used to be when she was very, very strong. But I think that she's in the right spot. Don't really think that she needed this, although that this probably won't affect her too much. Now the last change for champions is Trinamir, where he cannot crit against jungle monsters anymore. Now, I have not actually played Trinamir Jungle myself, but I have gone into the practice too and tested his jungle clear when he got like that huge uh, buff on when he get uh, when he got the attack speed on uh, when he attacked champions, like the 50 plus percent attack speed at, at level 1. So I did test Trinamir Jungle, maybe played a game or two of him, but per based on my personal experience, I don't think that this is going to affect Trinamir jungle too badly because in the in your first clear you don't actually crit against the jungle monsters that much anyway on your first buff you'll be building up your fury on your next camp maybe like let's say raptors you finally reach full fury and you would hit a crit here or there but not too much when you reach your on the way to your third buff you might even use your your heal or you might not but even if you did when you reach your third buff you don't crit against your third buff that often anyway at least in the early game so i think his his first clear is not going to be too affected but in the late uh, mid to late game when you actually do build crit and you basically crit against jungle monsters all the time of course this will affect it but generally your first clear speed is what is the most important not your clear speed at the later stages of the game so i think trinamir jungle is still fine i think he's still going to be in roughly the same spot that he was so i don't think it's going to affect trinamir jungle too much that's just my view but we'll have to see how it goes so ARM changes, I'm just going to scroll through for you guys, I'm, I'm not going to cover it in depth of course. Ooh, this is pretty interesting though, dev timers after 11 minutes, dev timers are capped at 45 seconds, so we'll help you kind of defend your base. Now earth changes, I'm getting a sort of the like ARM um, treatment for changes, Corky getting packaged at 2 minutes, pretty interesting. And package spawning every 1 minute is interesting as well. Alright, so we're just going to quickly scroll through. And we're going to get to the item changes now. As expected, Edge of Night is getting a nerf. So basically, in essence, it's getting a 150 gold increase. Now, although 150 gold is not a lot, but the main goal of this is that Edge of Night was getting rushed as a first item on a lot of people who ne don't necessarily even build Edge of Night, or they only build Edge of Night later. People like Lee Sin, uh, for example, a lot of the junglers, for example. Um... Will this change be effective? Now, personally, from my viewpoint, I do believe so. Because we had occasions uh, like the Garden Angel meta where every ADC was rushing Garden Angel just because of how cheap and effective it was. Now, they, of course, they did have to nerf other aspects of it like its AD and its, resp uh, its uh, cooldown timer for the revive. But uh, nerfing the... the, the uh, Gold was part of it as well, so maybe they might need to nerf some of the stats on the on the uh, Age of Night as well. But I think that the, nerfing it by 150 gold is 
a step in the right direction. You don't want to nerf it by something like 300 gold, of course, because that would be a too huge of a change, and it would make the item like pretty painful to buy, knowing that it used to be 300 gold cheaper. Also, same for like the Blade of the Rune King um, Rush 80 carry mana, where every 80 carry was building Blade of the Rune King, even those that didn't really benefit so much from it, like Misfortune, just because of how OP it was. So, we've had a lot of these metas where items are strong with us. I do think that they know how to deal with it. It starts off with a gold nerf, if it doesn't really work in this patch. It will be getting a nerf to some of his base stats, or the cooldown on the uh, Veil itself. So, Essence we were getting a 5 uh, AD buff. But this is basically reverting the nerf that they gave it, I believe, um, way back when. And they're also buffing its mana from 2% missing mana to 3% missing mana. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I think the missing mana part doesn't actually matter. Now, Essence Reaver has basically been eclipsed by every, by like other items in general. Like A lot of people who used to build Essence Reaver, like let's say uh, Lucian, Corky, Zaya, like, Corky goes for like mana immune instead now. Zaya and Lucian just go for like Bloodthirst, the third item, and they go for like IE and Solari Charge Blade as their first item. So basically, even non AD carries, nobody builds Essence Reaver. Like, N Essence Reaver isn't in anybody's like optimal build at all. And Essence Reaver is meant to be like an early item, like a first item kind of deal, or in like non AD carries, maybe a third item at most. The main thing that made Essence Reaver good was that it was cheap. And it was effective at what it does. But they nerfed it. They nerfed the AD by 5, if I remember correctly. They nerfed the ability haste by like 10, I think. And they, I think that they nerfed the cost as well and made it more expensive. So you're paying more for less. Which, of course, never feels good as a customer for anything. And I don't think that this, this uh, nerf will revert it to being a good item. Because 5 AD buff is pretty, pretty meh. And... You still don't get back the ability haste you lost, and the cost is still not as low as what it used to be. Now, you would you, you don't realize that for first items, or you may not realize that for first items, like 200 gold, 100, 100 gold, 150 gold, like on the edge of night, it makes a huge difference because on your first item, sometimes you can get your first item before the like huge dragon or herald fight, and sometimes you can. So it really does matter. And I think that one of the best parts of Essence Weaver is generally you, you used to be able to pick it up before the first uh, dragon or herald fight, even if you don't get a kill just from good farming. But with the like uh, gold uh, increase, you cannot do that anymore. So I really don't think this is going to help Essence Reaver too much. Hextech Mega Drive getting a refund cooldown um, buff from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. So you can get your refund more often. Now, honestly, I haven't actually seen anybody build Hextech Mega Drive as well as the Ixtali Seed Jar since it was released. Ixtali Seed Jar definitely is a meme item, but Hextech Mega Drive does seem useful uh, on paper, but of course I do think it's a kind of later in the game. I, I don't think people are rushing Hextech Mega Drive at, at all at the moment, although I do think that that could possibly be a viable strategy on some supports who just want to spam Redemption or Locket, but um, no one really builds this at the moment, so I do think that this buff probably is warranted. Now, Rune Changes, Brutal. So Brutal... It is getting the armor penetration and magic penetration part of it removed. So now, junglers will definitely still take Brutal. But, last time, uh, Brutal used to be really good. And after that, like other runes like Champion and uh, Hunter Vampirism became like better than Brutal. But now Brutal is sort of coming back uh, where a lot of people are starting to take Brutal again. Now, personally, I don't normally take Brutal on anyone except junglers. And, of course, this will help. Uh, this will not help. This will... Um, nerf the so-called scaling of Brutal. Like, Brutal doesn't actually scale, but um, penetration by default in the mid to late game is going to be more useful because people are going to have more uh, armor or magic resist in the mid to late game. So that is that is why Brutal actually still g actually helps you a little bit in the mid to late game. But now it's only solely going to help your early game because 7 AD or 14 AP is not going to scale in any way whatsoever. So it's sort of like just to have a better like laning phase or like early better early levels. Um, aside from that, it's not really going to do much for you. And I do think that this is quite a vi quite a sizable uh, nerf to Brutal. So Brutal definitely is a lot weaker now. And I think that a lot of people will take Brutal a lot less. Now, jungle monsters, I haven't really noticed this, but jungle monsters in combat no longer level up, or rather no longer gain current health from leveling up, so you don't, like, uh, get some monster into smite range and it levels up and you smite and it, and it gains health at that point in time and you don't actually pick up the jungle monsters, so, yeah, so, that is 
pretty much it for patch 3.0. Overall, a, a lot of champion changes, a lot of item changes, a lot of necessary changes, like especially on stuff like Edge of Night and Kale. But some um, probably unnecessary ones, although uh, I guess most people are just disappointed because we thought that patch 3.0 would bring more, but it didn't. But other than that, that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.